Trophy. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The pointy end of ESL 1, the grand final on the biggest stage of CSGO has ever seen. And we have seen some extraordinary matches to get us to this point as they play off for this gargantuan trophy and a major and two teams which deserve to be in the final. You've got one team that in envy seem to be with their new lineup almost unstoppable. Nothing can touch them. Then you've got Fnatic, which just seem to be untouchable. You've got the unstoppable force against the immovable object. Now, my job normally here is to hype you up. Your esports fans, your CSGO fans, do I need to hype this to you? Do I? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the biggest game of the year? Of course you are. Now let's see who you think is going to win. Do you think it's going to be envious? Or do you think it's going to be fanatic? That's not loud enough. That is not loud enough for a grand final. Do you think envious are going to win? Or do you think fanatic are going to win? My friends, we are ready. Are you ready for a grand final? Then let's do this for this massive cup. I'm going to say three words. Are you ready? One more time. Put your hands together for the teams and players coming to the stage. And this time, make some noise for Team Envy. Big welcome to their opponents entering the arena. Here are the reigning ESL1 champions, Fanetti! And we're finally here. All 10 players left in ESL1 Cologne 2015. Only 10 players left for contention for that trophy, for the title of ESL1 champions, but of course, title of the champion of the majors here in Cologne 2015. Gentlemen, MV versus Fnatic. Earlier we talked in broad strokes. Who do we think is gonna win? What's the story for both teams? But now that we see them coming in, has anything changed? Both teams, I mean, Fnatic, first of all, after that kind of turmoil they had to go through to beat out VP and they've risen back from the ashes, they look confident as ever in these finals. I, I agree. I mean, I kind of feel like NBS has been slightly more hot today, as I mentioned earlier. But then again, Fnatic is just an unstoppable force, especially when they get going. And 
It's rare that we see Olaf have a bad map. For him to have two bad, ma bad maps in a day, I don't hope so. But I feel like Olaf is going to be on point. I think that he's furious right now. He wants to prove the fans, the crowd, something that he is the world's best player. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many tools on Fnatic for Pronex to use. They've, they've shown over this streak of dominance that they've had that they can counter anything that's thrown at them. You know, when they get into tough stretches, they have that mind in Pronex, they have that tactical genius that can figure it out. Their pauses are incredible. You can always see they figure yeah. something out, and then they just go on a run. There's just so many tools on that team to use. But they're going against that hot, that honeymoon period of a new team that's just on fire right now. I mean, for me, do, do, just basing off these two teams, right? right now. You have a very uh, mentally uh, tired fanatic just came off from a best of three versus Virtus Pro, but then again, they're also warmed up, right? When, and then you have Envious had, having a chance to just watch Fnatic, Fnatic's games, they had a time to relax, get some food, you know, then That's just true. coming in. But So it's always going to be pros and cons if you want to play last or if you want to just play the first game. So overall, I think that the obviously the warm-up period is going to benefit Fnatic coming into like a very uh, good cobble side, a very good last map. But then again, if they haven't had a chance to like get some more energy in the body and stuff like that, I think Envy might come in here and just swing it off and potentially win the first map. Wow. Similar, what about you? Any outside factors that concern you for either team? Almost, for some reason, the word timeout comes to mind. And uh, Fnatic, they're going to have to be very wise about using those timeouts to break Envy's momentum. Because I, I kind of follow in Fifth's uh, footsteps here, where I think that Fnatic, or that Envy have a strong chance of just taking control of the map right off the bat. They just got to watch an entire best of three series of Fnatic. They've done their homework, and knowing Happy, he wasn't somewhere, you know, taking a nap. He's done that in the past. In a match like this, he was definitely watching, and he was definitely getting prepared for what Fnatic are going to throw at them. So. This is going to come down to the mental fortitude on Fnatic's side, knowing if Envy start to pull away, if NBK starts to go completely crazy again, when to put a halt to things. Because clearly, as we saw in Cobblestone, his team, with that timeout, they always make good use of it. That's when they can just completely turn the tide. I agree, I agree. And just to see this in a big perspective, one thing that actually crushed my mind was that these two teams are probably the best two teams in the world at playing with all kinds of different weapons, right? Yeah. You have Fnatic with the Flush the P90, the JW Max 7, yep. you have the Envious with the Scout of NVK, the Pistol Kings of Kiyoshima, etc. And that's something which is really going to be shown in this game. You're not only going to be, see, be seeing a battle and a war being fought on AWPs, M4s and AKs, this is going to be the entire arsenal of the CSGO weaponry. Yeah, it, it should be really interesting to watch. I want to bring to the spotlight, this time for the final, two players that we've mentioned quite a bit of throughout this tournament. One, of course, Olaf Meister. Can't forget him from Fnatic. We've been saying potentially, maybe even now confidently, the best player in the world. It really will depend on how he performs in this final. Even if he denies it. Well, even if he denies it, right? But then on the other side, for Envy, Apex. He's been in the spotlight, coming in with this new roster. How is he going to perform? It, will he do well along with Kenny? But then Apex really has exploded in a lot of these maps to make sure that MV can get this far. Now, let me go ahead and basically make the point here, the big point, which is Apex does what Apex does because they have no fear. He has 100% confidence in his team. That's the magic of this new roster, is the fact that on Titan, Apex and Kenny, they were never able to have that, that backing from their teammates. They never knew, is somebody at my back rushing into this site with me, or is he waiting around the corner and I'm just going to go and die needlessly here? That's not the case. Now, Envy, this is why they're able to be so effective in pistol rounds, in, in these Force by situations where it's tech nine and it's run or die. You go in, if you stop, that's it, the round is over, you're done, you've lost it. Envy, they don't make those mistakes anymore. Apex, he can lead the charge confidently because he knows 100% that his team, they're never going to stop. They're right on his tail. That's what makes him so dangerous as an entry fragger right now. Yeah, also, and as well, we saw in the semifinals matchup how, how even in distribution the kills were for Envy. Yeah. It's not like one player just outside of NBK taking over in Inferno, but I mean, for the most part, it was just so concise from top to bottom in the kill count. And the big thing is they ran a lot of those death squads where they would have four people together, one person on the other side of the map watching the flank. So. If Fnatic's gonna, their trademark is that aggression between Olaf Meister and JW, finding some action, being the aggressors, going out and searching for it, and those death squads can punish that. It's always mattered with Fnatic what comes next, because they can recover from that situation so good. Yeah, now you see both teams 
huddled around, making sure they're ready for the map veto. Before we start discussing the map veto, something to know, both teams have only dropped one map coming into the finals. MV just two against TSM. And same for Fnatic, they only dropped that one map against VP in the semifinals on Mirage. So both of them pretty much a clean record coming in, just tested to their limits in the semis. What do you guys think? Are there any clear ideas here going forward? Well, let's I mean, give it to the yeah, yeah, the let's veto really quick. <laughs> it, it, it's hard for us to say, okay, we didn't even get to say anything. Overpass instantly removed by NVS. Not the biggest of surprise, I would say. They've been looking shaky on it at times. And Mirage, that's pretty much a respect ban, I believe. No, uh, no, of course not. I mean, having bad results versus Luminosity uh, and then just getting torn apart, uh, torn, torn to thread, shreds versus Virtus Pro. They're not feeling comfortable on this map as of yet, uh, or for this tournament. And I was going to say, Envy picking Dust 2, I mean, that's a map that plays to their strengths, plays to that individual skill level, and even though they lost it against TSM, TSM's the best team in the world on that map, so there's no shame in dropping it to them, but still very, very confident on it. Oh, wow. Ooh. Fnatic just coming off of that big win on Cobblestone, take it for themselves, and then Inferno for map oh, number I hope oh. we get to see Inferno. We yeah, need I would three maps. I would love I would to please. See Inferno. <laughs> Great game, and give us three maps. Yeah, I would actually love to see Inferno. Overall, I think that Envy is a... Their Dust 2 pick for me is a little bit uh, sketchy. I mean, Fnatic, yeah, they don't play that much. But then Envy as well, feeling very confident, even though they, like Hadian said, wow. losing to TSM. One, one thing and I've look noticed at that, about they go T side. Oh. Envy start T. Well, one thing I've noticed about Fnatic on Dust 2, and maybe this part plays into why it was picked as well, is that if you punish that early aggression out of out of JW and all off Meister, that team gets very spread out. They don't always seem to have like a great plan uh, to find ways to group up and do that counter aggression that gets them back into the round. So uh, I think Envy's uh, looking at taking advantage of that on a map that. You know, Fnatic is just a little bit. If you can say they're weaker on a map, I think Dust Two would be the map that they're a little bit, a little bit weaker on. Mm -hmm. And looking in the past, these teams have a big history on Inferno. That's why it's also interesting to go into the third one with the old Envious lineup. Fnatic beat them three times in a row. So from that record, Fnatic should have the edge on that map. But then again, you see Envious going for the terrorist side pick. They have the chance of deciding to go for the CT half, one of the strongest sides to start on in the potential third map of a major final, and they go for the terrorist side. We saw what they were able to do against the TSM defense, and that's what they're looking to do against the Fnatic defense as well. That's like a pride pick. That's like, I don't even yeah. care. No, and there was some discussion there too, because they, they started CT and they yeah. came back and changed it back to T. So that was, there was a little bit of discussion, but I think Happy's trying to make a point it. here. Yeah. He knows that Thorin's watching. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is, and in a lot of ways, it, you know, along with the Dust 2 pick, I think that goes hand in hand. Fimi, you were mentioning oh, a little bit skeptical given that Fnatic were like, you know what, we had a little tough time this week on Mirage, let's ban it out. And the MV's like, we lost to TSM, no worries. You know what, TSM is respected, we'll still take it because we're still just as confident. Maybe they are really just riding this high. Maybe they're testing that honeymoon period they're having. How high can we fly right now with this roster? Ladies and gentlemen, the maps have been set. It's between MV and Fnatic. Who will be the next ESL1 champion? Who will be the next major title holder? We're going to take a quick short break, and then when we come back, it's going to be map number one of the final. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The ESL One Cologne Finals is about to begin. Team Envious swept aside Team Solo Mid on Inferno. That is the final map. But Fnatic, the resilience they just showed against Virtus Pro, 
definitely put them in stronghold once again coming into this one. Joining me for this finals will be Anders, of course, and Henry G. Hello. What do we expect? Dust two first up between these two teams. Very confident pick from a team that just lost the TSM on this very map. Yeah, maybe that's what it's all about going into this. Just uh, showing absolutely no doubt and no fear and uh, believing that you're destined to win this. I like that. I hope that's the attitude of both these teams. Yeah, I think you can't take too much away from the TSM game. Like I said, they're the absolute masterminds on CT Dust 2 especially. So they, you can't say MBS should, should be afraid of this map. It's an individual skill play. And we know that big players can go big on this. So Kenny S especially, all eyes are going to be looking to him with the AWP. Will he be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with JW on the deathmatch arena? Yeah, that's, that'll be very interesting. I mean, they have some, uh, some pretty strong people in this arsenal fanatic as well is not just going to be jw i think or ping if kenny really steps it up then all of meister might be able to join in there yep. as well and we all know how good that double up setup is on dust too well, that's the whole thing the double up setup is the, the the best setup in my opinion you can actually run it allows you to anchor both bomb sites and now move your rifles around setting them up for and adjusting to the team you're playing against you have to have crossfires in middle boost up a short for example and it can be the strongest you can be but the difficulty is getting to that point we know these teams like to force by so much they're economy can get so affected with the, the stubbornness almost of uh, not wanting to be the first ones to bow out and actually do the full eco. Well, Envious will be starting out on the T side on does 2, Fnatic on the CT of course, and they were actually watching this TSM semi-finals earlier on today, I could see them on the balcony here yep. in this stadium watching on. How much would they have taken from that TSM game? Bear in mind the, the strong result that TSM had on this map, or they, you know, Pronax just say, you know what, we've got our own game, while TSM are doing great things, we know how to do it better. That, that's the whole thing. You can't take too much away from watching other people's games. Like it's, it's good to take notes and watch how they approach certain situations, but the, the key is you should concentrate on what you're doing, the executions you have to mind, and then coming into the when you come when you're facing those those sort of placements, you need to work out what can we run here that goes back into the round. Every round is completely different, and you need to judge each situation based on that. So it's just a case of getting an idea and a feel of how they they take egg bomb sites and potentially hold off certain choke points as well. How do you feel about the matchup of styles here between the two teams? I mean, we've seen all tournament long how hard it's been for Envy's opponents to stop that incredibly aggressive terrorist side. They all know it's coming, <laughs> and they all get surprised by it anyway. What about Fnatic? I thought you were referring to the crowd there. <laughs> for a moment, because that is going to be part of the challenge as well. Probably so. Oh, I think the pistol round is about to start here. Ten seconds left. Okay, quick prediction. Coming into this one, three maps, and I put you on the spot. Oh, now then. Well, I really do think it's going to be a three mapper. I'm going to tip it in favor of Envious, but we have to see how this first map unfolds. It's going to be such a close one. It's definitely on a knife edge, but the pistol is now coming in to fruition. And let's have a look at the bar. We do have Team Envious on the T side. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is the ESO One Cologne Finals. It is Fnatic versus Envious. The pistol round is underway. Here we go then. Fast execution into the B tunnel so we can see one player lurking in T-spawn, but the CTs have got some aggression onto the short area as well. They're trying to get as much intel as they possibly can, but not finding anything yet. Oh no, this could be a big problem here. If Happy goes down, a lot of the setup for Envy is going to be... But look at this, he actually sees two people. Flusher, blind shot, takes down Apex, and now they're in the B bomb site. Flusher getting a chance to reload back up. It's already here, Mark Hiroshima with a stunning shot to shot down all of Meister. It's now a 4v4. JW still alive. Kenny gets a kill on Crims. Flusher in the back lines. He's out of ammo. <laughs> a knife is out. What's happening? Flusher! He's oh. getting stabbed. He goes down. Oh, Ricky! He drops Flusher! It's going to be a 2v2. No bomb plan. And there it is. Happy double kill and envy. They take the pistol. Amazing stuff there. We saw the CTs pushing to try and get some information at the start of the round. The quick execution into B. We were so pandemonium. And look at this moment. Both players running out of ammo on the platform. And MBK taking the knife there. Amazing stuff there. And what a brilliant start for Team Envious as they take the first round on Dust2. We can see, though, the force by coming in from Fnatic. They definitely will have a taste for blood going into this round. How will they react to it? They were looking to stack out the B side, maybe go for that passive take over on A, but happy you can see or here, just drilling down, taking a look around. MBK and Apex on the creep through. You saw the incredible opening statistics. Pronax is the man that's going to get tested if Apex were to pick through, but 
Nobody's showing. This is Fnatic playing a very passive. Apex is going to push on through. Good little flash there. Doesn't get a second. Taking down to three health, but somehow gets away with a life because Kenny S comes in and supports. That's perfect information. Gafford, as we said, though, Flusher answers back onto NBK. Scout on Scout. He takes the scalp of uh, NBK there. And now it's a four on three situation in favor of Envious. Well, if this is how we start, you've got to wonder where we're going to end in this grand finals. There's JW to take down Happy, and it's back to a 3v3 here. Envy, usually they're the ones dishing out this kind of punishment in the second round, but Fnatic, they could do it too, and maybe even better. And JW Ooh. on long still fighting there as Apex goes down to Flusher. It's now a reverse kill there as Kenny will drop JW, and it's a 2v2. And Kenny, he's not even that scared. He's actually going to go and look into CT spawn. Bomb is ticking, and there's no kit, obviously, on the CT side. So retake going to be very tough, and I think they're just looking for the exits. And you can see... This is a big round now. They haven't got the kids to play with, so they're just going to want to be saving their scouts there. But Crims does take down Kenny as making this round very expensive. Gets both of them as well. And that's going to be all the terror is taken down, but the bomb will blow up. But a huge economic deficit for the teaser. And what this, I think that sums up how this game's going to go down. Every kill, <laughs> even when they've got the first two frags in middle, Fnatic answer back and end up getting a clean sweep there. But the headline is Envious go 2 0 up. It is the start they needed. The crowd very much behind Envious. That may well work in their favor. We saw the French crowd earlier on singing the anthem, but... Here we go, then we can see, look at the buyback from Fnatic. They picked up some rifles, they're ready to go. Kenny Esto does have the AWP, goes with that aggression on long. Isn't able to find anything, but it does open the round up. And imagine how mad that is. He actually goes long in a round with no body armor. And it's such a common sight to be throwing grenades in there. If he gets tagged with no body armor, he's going to be very low on health. Apex had armor, but still down to 58. He's in the middle, he's going to keep being here. And he goes down to Flusher. That might have been a bit of a slip up. And that's now a man down for Team Envy. That's yep. going to cause some problems. The smoke from Pronax is delaying him. Kenny has pushed through the smoke, went too aggressive, and Flusher catches him in the back. And this is a disaster. Now for Envy, they tried to help out, but Fnatic's force is working wonders. MBK is creeping through over onto B side, but he's going straight into Crimson Molifies. The hill go down. Flusher raining the shots through. This has not gone Envy's way. Yeah, some big mistakes being made there. They didn't need to commit one by one into the middle area, getting taken down by the scout. And this, as you can see, they have got the AWP remaining, but five on two situation. You really do have to favor the CT setup here. Fnatic looking incredibly strong there, and JW does take down Kiyoshima. Happy's going to be the last man remaining, but that is a round on the board for Fnatic. And that force by does work out for them, and it was a crazy situation going into that round. They even salvaged the AWP that Kenny was wielding at the beginning of the round, and that's going to be on JW, not something that's going to make anybody on Envy uh, smile. Envy, on the other hand, they're not going to bend so easily, even though they actually didn't get that many kills on the round. They're still going to buy up here, everyone except Kenny, that is. This is the stubbornness I talked about. No team will want to back down in these initial stages of the game. You can see them getting Tech 9s and P250s. All five players coming into the B tunnels, though. Potentially going to do a similar tactic to what they do on the pistol, smoking up and then going straight through. They have got to smoke on MVK there, so just biding their time, waiting for the CT utility to be used up here. Flusher with the AK holding a CT spawn is going to be checked out. Happy is the sole man that's going to check this angle, but Crimson Olofmeister has been so solid. And they're holding B site very deep as well. You can see Flusher just tucked in there, and they're going to burst on through the smoke straight into B site. That's going to be a great flash, but Crims not going for the shot straight away. We'll manage to get around a little peek around, but Kiyoshima comes in with a the pistol. They managed to get off Meister. The B control is in the hands of Envious. Somehow they managed to find the heads of Fnatic the second they peeked. Yeah, and you can tell Fnatic right here, they're not even going to try and go for it. They know they've got the rifles picked up, they already have armor. And even without any grenades here on the terrorist side, holding the B-bomb side is still a lot easier. Happy sneaking out into the middle, he's going to get caught by Flusher. But these are all just exit frags. And you know what, Henry, this has to sting for Fnatic because they run a very similar strat themselves when they have pistol armor. Except Fnatic do a very, a, a much more interesting, that's a nice shot, long range, but it gets refragged. But Fnatic's variation of this strat involves actually standing behind the smoke in the entrance and then flashing through in a pop flash. That's exactly what they run on their pistol round. And we know how strong Envious can be with these force by with pistols as well. They just went in with P250s and found the first two frags. That's so huge. And like you could see, Fnatic saw it coming as well. They just got taken down. And like you said, the bomb goes down in that situation and they just fell back completely. And this is going to be such a back and forth game. That lovely shot there from Apex there onto JW. But 
the, the dual orb setup coming in now. This is what we talked about. This game is going to be crazy. This is absolutely fantastic stuff. This is the strongest setup you can run on Dust 2, but let's see how it unfolds now. And it's all off most of the man that was going in towards long, but I think they've already sussed this one out. Fnatic making a quick rotation, but MBK, he's charging headlong in. He managed to get a good tag down, but Happy was picked off by JW. They drop down into ramp, but they're going to get charged on down. That is a very aggressive. MB is the only down, but it was quickly equalized by Flusher and Crims. And now MBK with a plant down is in a two on one. Crims is the sole man. Is he going to try and push this? Well, he's got no kit and he just put up the one grenade here. If he got a really quick frag on someone, he's definitely going to keep going. But the more time passes, it's going to be very tricky. And Envy, are they going to show themselves? A bit of a chance there. But now they know where he is and that kind of gives it up. And yes, yeah, saving the AWP, definitely a better choice right here. So I think Crims was looking for an opening, but one didn't present itself in the first you know, five seconds and then it's just not worth it. You can tell this is the grand final, the big plays coming through, the quick call just to get up short as fast as possible, exchange of frags there, dropping down into CT spawn as well. It's going to be a really fast-paced game. And that's the fourth one on the board for Envious there, but Crims does save the WP. Looking at the money for the CTs now, they're going to have to make that decision. We know they want to force by here, but this might not be the right call, judging by the current state of the game. So, it'll be interesting to see how they approach this one. They're looking like they're not going to force into it. You know, I was talking to Hastro earlier on, the owner of Envy, and about the team, how confident they were. And it's, the confidence is so much that, well, obviously, we were watching Inferno at the time. They're so confident they will just all pile on through. Nobody will stop. They will keep on pushing through smoke, keep on pushing into sights, and they will be backed up. And maybe that's just what's giving K Apex the abilities to try and break through onto sights here. But Flusher and JW with a double pistol kill will manage to turn things around. But Kiyoshima, ever present for Envious in the semi finals, turns up once again here in the final and that is going to be a bomb plant coming through for Envy. So Krim once again saving the AWP. These rounds are absolutely crazy. The, the teams aren't feeling the map out. They're not playing traditionally whatsoever. They're just making sure they're rushing into choke points as fast as they can. They know the pressure is on and they're capitalizing on that. And this is going to be the fifth round and they've now found Krim's as well. He's got 8 HP and he's going to be hunted down. You can see them pincering from either end of the map and Happy should take him here, which he does. And they're looking very strong now. And looking at the CT money, after not force buying to that, they made the right decision. They do give themselves a chance going into this one. So we're now starting in the seventh round and Olaf Firestone and Pronax still have zero kills on the board here. Wow. A little bit of an uncomfortable throwback to the game against Virtus Pro where Olaf or Mirage ended up being uh, almost entirely absent. So you've got to hope that he's able to bring you back because they need him desperately right now. Yeah, I mean, in his defense, he came back and got, well, something like 50 kills over the next two maps. So he absolutely has it in him to do that. But right now, it's a very yeah, good sure. early pressure from Envious, but look at Fnatic. They have gone very aggressive here. Kenny S is going to walk out completely unknown, but he does manage to get the support. Apex, they heard the footsteps, they sussed it out, and Kiyoshima strikes, and suddenly mid completely clear, and Fnatic find themselves two men down. An absolutely great position here for the Envy team, finding those two kills, and that was all about timing. A little bit more time or a little bit less time for Fnatic, and they would have probably had the advantage instead, but Envy. They got it down just perfect. Now, there's only three members left, and they're spread out all across the map here. So we saw the CTs there trying to adapt to what Envious are doing, getting that very fast-paced game, getting information at the start. But Envious have took the pe their foot off the pedal there and waited for that push as well. A great read by them. And you can see them actually showing some amazing discipline now. The CTs desperate for a kill here. Kiyoshima has got the information that JW is pushing along. This duel could sacrifice this round for CTs, and he will fall back now and back to the bomb side for him. Just how... Oh, uh, well, wait, wait a minute. JW, who wasn't taken down, does manage to get himself one. Backs away. He's got the fl support of Flusher down long as well, but they're going to pressure him. And Kenny S, of all people, comes around with that Tech 9. He manages to make it count. Now Flusher is well aware, and Kenny lands himself another. And that will be the round going to Envious. What I was about to ask you is just how vital this double up setup is becoming for Envious now that Kenny is on the team. Happy, happily taking that up as well. It's actually quite unorthodox to run it as a T side, though. It's one of the, it shows you the mentality they're going into this. They've got the opportunity to do it, and it's working for them. So why not? They're changing their, their mentality almost every single round. They're either rushing up short or holding back. And the CTs really can't get a foot in here. They're trying to stabilize the game and just get one round on the board just to potentially get the economy on their side, but it's looking like they're getting shut out just in terms of fragging right now. And Crims, the last man, once again, has got an M4 in hand, but you know the terrorists are hunting him down, and MBK is going to be the man to find him, but no, Crims takes him down. Apex should finish the job, and there it is. They're looking incredibly sharp right now. Do Fnatic have an answer for this? Looking at their economy right now, I'm not sure they do. This could be too far gone for them at this stage. 
Again, Olaf Meister and Pronox still yet to frag on this map in the eighth round. Very strong start here for the Frenchman. And you've got to just point out as well, there was about 10 seconds left as the bomb went down that last round. If Flusher doesn't go down, he might be able to buy enough time for them to win the round just by killing one person. Yep. And then Crims would have essentially won, won it by staying alive here. Kenny attempting a shot out on long, but not going to connect with anything. And it's obviously just pistols here on Fnatic. Double nade attempt there from Pronax and JW. But Kenny has Kiyoshima backing him up, so he doesn't need to worry about these. But the only man being pressured with it all happy. Going very close, Olaf Meister tries to push him down, but Happy not going to go down so easily. And now, of course, MBK steps into the threshold to take himself a kill. Flusher will get hunted down. He's just caught between a very hard rock and a very solid place. It's 7-1, ladies and gentlemen, to Envious on Dust2. The French are renowned for being very strong on this map. And after the semi-finals, you thought maybe, just maybe, they were second-guess themselves. But clearly, this is a very confident Envy coming into the finals. So that's five in a row now for Envious. What is the response from Fnatic? Well, JW has got the AWP. Be interesting to see where he does tell it. He's going to actually show some aggression towards middle. Nothing going to come of it, though. Kenny S is calling information there. Three CTs crossed. And again, this battle is going to be very important. Currently got three people in upper dark, and you can tell Happy's set up here and scoping into that B bomb site. A couple of grenades gonna follow up to block his vision. We see MBK earlier here in the playoffs actually get a couple of kills through that smoke in the middle. It's gonna be JW missing a flick and Still plenty of time here for Envy to come up with a solution. Actually, they're going to run right in here. Epi's already tried this and it failed, but this time you can tell he's going to be more cautious. Backed away. Did get tagged by JW. I didn't see whether it was through the door. I mean, it must have been because it was either that or a leg. But it does look like it's going to be a slowdown from Envious. A minute on the clock, plenty of time. And it seems that Fnatic are starting to read this situation well. Crims is going to be lingering up close in that smoke now. The key thing to know is here they haven't actually got any information anywhere on the map apart from the B tunnel, so it's be interesting to see how this goes down. Well, it looks like they're about to go for it. Olaf and Crims, they've got a sort of a crossfire, but this is going to be very tricky anyway. I think Envy's got a very good position. I don't like this corner for Crims. It can be so hard to defend yourself in here. Flash bang out once, buying more time. 30 seconds, Olaf gets a kill. Crims spraying down one. It's a double for Olaf, but Crims, he can't finish. Kenny, who takes two in return with that AWP, and now there's only 20 seconds left. Flusher right outside the Bomb side, and he's looking for that plant inside Ken. He's going to put it down once. Flusher, can he get the angle? He's spraying but not connecting. And the battle just keeps on going here. Kenny looking for an opening top of the box. And Fnatic, they've got the man advantage. They're going to try and slow it down here. Molotov to follow up to push Happy back in. Kenny with a headshot. It's down into a 2v2 as Pronax takes down Kenny. It's all on Happy and he drops. Flusher picks it up. Excellent pre-fire and that's a good round for Fnatic. Finally. They finally get their second round on the board and this is when they need to find the momentum there. So we can see Pronax finally making the AWP work for him. The retake's effective but Kenny S coming into that B site. He's looking really scary right now. Two quick quick scopes going into the bomb site and it looks very impressive so what's the answer back here do envious go back to the fast start and get straight up short just to try and lock that down or do they keep this slower pace mentality they've been employing the last couple of rounds well kenny's going to get himself back on the rob they did have a plenty in the bank of course to get straight back into this after so many rounds back to back mbk with the bomb is the sole man over and B. It's risky play considering jw's gone aggressive and that nade's going straight onto mbk will knock him down to 52 health that was Pinpoint actually straight at his feet. Wouldn't have known it. Apex just waiting off the side. Kiyoshima, everybody, as you said, is going to slow the pace down. Trying to work out Fnatic, trying to figure out, get them to use those smokes. But at the moment, no information being gathered at all. Just lots of shots rattling through into darkness. Oh, Flusher, the follow nade did catch MBK. And that's going to lower them. JW is going to try and catch on towards Kenny S. He's on nothing. He's pinned in the corner. This is Envy. They're going to have to pack away, but they've rescued the bomb. Uh, Kenny very low there and still got 50 seconds left there. Rushing out on long as well and in the pit. Pronax is hiding and he's got a little bit back up here, but they both go down. Pronax still in pit. He is actually going to get the kill on Apex and now it's into a 2v1 happy 35 seconds. Bomb in middle. Seems like an impossible task, especially as Olaf Meister is there to yes. shut him down. It's a nice triple kill and a very confusing round, but Fnatic come out on top. One they absolutely had to win as well. Had they have lost that one, they'd been forced to win over Rico and it could have been devastating. 
waiting for them. Finally, Fnatic showing some fortitude, getting themselves a couple of rounds on the board. And this is due to Envious is changing the pace. They're, going, they're slowing right down now. And JW's hitting some shots and actually shutting them down in the mid-area there. So here we go. We go into the 11th round now. But Pronax only on a Famous. We can see the double orb set up for the Envious has come out again. And it has gotten a lot of rounds on the board so far. Once again, JW going a little more aggressive over on long, but not able to find anything. And that's given up a little bit of catwalk control. Envious going to try and make use of this one. They're going to push on around. JW holding the angle at the cross. MBK is going to be the first on through. Kiyoshima and Kenny passing the bomb to him. He's not going to go just yet. They need to time this just right. Now, the question is, is it a fake? Because they still have Happy and Apex over on long. It'd be a big commitment to a fake, I feel, right now. But Pronax alone down in pitch is a bit scary. If he goes down, JW's pretty much alone. Apex has already pushed through. He's actually out on long behind Pronax, who doesn't know. And JW's going to go down. Flusher trying to come up. But Apex coming in from long to get the one to get the double. He's running back in. Pronax is there. He's crazy. And Apex finally goes down. But it might have been too late here. 2v4. What a great round here from Apex. He actually infiltrated the A bomb site. Yeah, Pronax having a moment of madness there, allowing the T to walk straight past him. That's the first set piece we've seen from Envious as well. A nice wall of smokes on the way, pintering both areas from short and long, and it's worked so effectively for him now. We can see them hunting the CTs, and they should be able to get them. Kenny S takes down Pronax. Olaf Meister is going to be the last man remaining. He's going to be in the lower B tunnels. He should be able to survive this, but that was a really nice reply from Envious. They've tried slowing it down and working the picks. It hadn't worked out for them, so they got themselves some out of control did the full execute onto the site and pinced it, and that's what it worked so well for them. So a nice response from them. Fnatic now going to be in a difficult situation. Just having a look at their money as well. They're going to have about... Oh, it's going to have to be a force, a force buyer, a full eco here. They've got one gun to play with, and this is when it's a very difficult situation to decide what to do. They're down on rounds. They probably want to play the long game and try and get as many on the board as possible. So we can see a couple of pistols coming out, but no armor. So this will just be an eco for them. Have they got anything left in the bank? Because eight rounds is already a great start for Envy, and they're looking for more, and they may well get it. JW going full on aggression, almost finds the head of Kiyoshima, takes him down to nine health, quickly retracts. Pronax gives him the cover, but it's opened up the mid for Apex. He's just rushed on through. Happy manages to get one over on B. Apex with another, and this is Fnatic dropping once again. Crims the Soul Man to keep them away on B site. Will just get punished. And all across the board, kills fall for Envy. It's nine rounds on the T side for them so far. Henry, you were pointing out you can really feel this is a grand finals, but I feel like with these two particular teams, they react differently to pressure than most other would. A lot of other teams, I think, would play even more carefully. You saw JW going aggressive on Catwalk there, and the instant reply from Apex is just run out middle and try and fight. That's guess, not normal behavior. I guess he's just trying to ascertain where the stacks may lie. Seeing one player on short may give him information, but we can see now there is a force by in place. Two scouts are happy, and Kenny S both getting frags on the board and making it a five on three in their favor. Two more players remaining at long. They should, they're going to be aware of that now, and they should just get out of that area. Relentless aggression from both Fnatic and Envious in this final. We were wondering whether they would slow it down, but it seems they are quickening up the pace here as Apex goes hunting for more. Looking around in towards the CT spawn, he will find Flusher, but it was a great little answer. Did manage to get Apex down to 11 hit points, but that leaves Crims once again on his lonesome. Pronax is a long way away across the map. And he's going to try and chase Happy down. If he can get the orb out of his hands and maybe try and rescue something, that would be great for them. But Happy's not falling for it. Crims the Soul Man left. Just trying to prevent Envious getting anything more from this round. But MBK will close it out. And this is 10 3. This is starting to become a very one sided first half. This definitely isn't a traditional game of CS. Every round being approached so differently. Normally, when you know you have the, the economic advantage, you want to slow it down, feel out the map, try and ascertain what's going on with these guys just rushing all over the place. Dual orbs in the T side almost every single time. And now we go into the quasi buy from Fnatic. So this could be another explosive round coming in. Yeah, NBK pulling out the classic uh, AK jump window peak right there. And see that all the time, don't you? <laughs> wow. 10 to 3, Envy right now. They're stomping Fnatic on Dust 2. It's going to be a bit of a refract there from JW, but Kenny to take down him right afterwards, and it's going to be Olofmeister taking out Kenny. Still a man advantage for Envy until 
They lose Apex. Ooh. It's not looking good here. They're actually losing to this force up from Fnatic, and that's a big turnaround. And I love the change of pace here. Fnatic, as soon as they have the advantage, they fall back and they start playing defensively. And that's very hard to do when you've been pushing that aggressively for the first 20 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. So once they got those first two kills, they wanted to get back, get to the bomb sites, and force the T's to make the mistakes from there. They have the man advantage. You can see MBK working his way up. The flusher is waiting on the bomb site for him. Clever little change of pace from Envy as well. I think, okay, we've lost two rifles over on B site. Flusher must be all on his own, but Flusher manages to get himself one down. Now Happy getting tagged up. You can see the trace fire also coming through the smoke, and he's going to get taken down. Flusher will turn the round in his favor, and Fnatic from a force get themselves the round. Is that the one? Is that the thing that's going to get Fnatic back in Dust2? It's certainly a step in the right direction. I love how Flusher essentially was bullied out behind that crate. They had two op shots through the box on him from 100 down to 70 and from 70 down to 33. And then he comes out and kills one and uh, almost gets the other one as well. It's a 10 4, last round of the half coming up. And double up on either side. Very well. Nice. That's what we talked about, Olaf being the anchor on the B-bomb site. He gets the opening frag on the happy. They smoke off the tunnels, and now they just need to force the T's to do something and they don't want to. So what's the reaction here? I was just wondering whether Envy would try and slow down after that, getting caught out by those pistols, but it seems not. Happy was darting straight for B-tunnels. Will get caught out, though. JW holding the angle. Doesn't manage to land the shot, though. Kenny S will get nailed. He's going to be Flusher popping out, but Olaf Meister will back that up. And now it is all down to Kiyoshima. Envious. They're going to be happy with 10 rounds nonetheless. Kiyoshima, literally nothing to lose coming into this one. Grim's going to hold the angle on that bomb. He's going to, going to sit and babysit it. Three members, Pronex coming around. Kiyoshima's going to try a little ramp drop here and try and scale for the element of surprise. He may catch JW out, but surely won't catch the rest out. You only win these situations if the other team makes some really grave mistakes. The one thing that Kiyoshima has, has two things going from here. It's the time that was on the clock, and it's the fact that they don't know where he is. Nice shot to start off, and he drops JW. But now they know where he is, and he's not got a lot of time left to switch his position. You can see he's trying to make them uh, guess, and they've guessed just right. Uh, smoke is up. He runs through his own Molotov into middle. Oh. Mid-air headshot on Trims, really turns a one heavy to Kiyoshima. For just a brief second, he made that look possible. Unbelievable last round there. I didn't think he had any chance of getting any, uh, even a frag there, but he finds two huge ones. It could have caused a massive upset there. What a half that was. High octane, non-stop action. Envious applying so much pressure early on. Very fast tactics, very unorthodox as well, but here you can see that jumping shot coming down the short. What crazy stuff that is, but... Overall, Fnatic doing well to get the amount of rounds they did, I feel. Like, they weren't able to build up any momentum whatsoever, getting one round early on in the force buy, and then getting shut out for about five or six rounds. And then it just seemed like Envious kept changing the pace, and it was very confusing for Fnatic to even adapt and get back into that. But five rounds is always enough when you're a Fnatic. Well, how do Fnatic respond to that? A solid pistol will be the best start as they have to sit and watch this clock tick down. What will go through? What will the in-game leaders be talking? What's Pronex mentioning to his team here? So they need to settle down. They realize they're 10-5 down in the first map of the Grand Finals. I, I don't think they were expecting that initial pace so early on. Like we said, Grand Final time, you need to start doing the unexpected. You can't do your traditional playbook. Like we said, these teams have been watching what you've been doing. So that's exactly what Envious did. That was very special to watch. And what a performance with individual skill. Kenny S stepping up on this final stage, getting 14 frags in the first half. He was looking very hot indeed. A lot of conversation here from Happy's point of view. He's been playing very well. He is at 10 kills, not that far from the scoreboard, but Pronax is at four. It sort of feels like Pronax is taking all of his resources and put them into trying to simply outcall Happy and figure out what's going on on that Envy side, because he's he's not had many kills. I think he's super focused. We saw Tronix earlier in the tournament with tons of kills, but right yeah. now it feels like it's it's all gone into trying to outcall Happy. I think they were just trying to adjust early on. We saw actually Olaf and Pronax on about zero for seven each, I think, before they finally arrived on the scoreboard. But it seems like things have uh, calmed down now. There's a nice pause in between that to give them some time to talk about it. But here we go, the Fnatic starting on the T side pistol. Five rounds for them. Let's take a look at the buy they're getting in. You can see armor being brought up with three players now. P250 on Flusher, smoke grenade for him. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if MVS kept the pace up and did a full push themselves and just tried to get that early frag before falling back. 
strong pistol here for Envious, would almost there wrap is. the game up. But that is a very aggressive bit of play from Apex. MBK trying to back him up as well, get around the side. But you could see Fnatic, their positions, they were very much ready for that. And they're going to try and pile on down to Cat. They do manage to get MBK down. Happy's trying to hang on in there. They're all going to pass on by. They've all managed to go around. He's behind them. He's got to get the kill. He does manage to get himself one and a second. And that may be enough to slow things down. Kiyoshi with a soul man left. Pronax just above him. They've got to know his position, but he's going to go for the plan. There's a bit of a chance for a Kali shot there, but he's going to be walking up. They don't know where he is. Pronax spots it. Kiyoshima, he can't touch it. Pronax takes him down. What a quick peek, and that's going to be Fnatic winning a very critical pistol round. I'll tell you what, they better be feeling lucky, because if Happy had hit a couple more shots in the back there, that could have been round over. Amazingly exciting stuff there. What a moment that could have been. A fast play from Shrub Shaw from the CTs there didn't really lead to much, but Happy playing that so incredibly intelligently, just unfortunately not able to transfer into more frags. Okay, so Envious trying to stack out a little bit of play there. They had sent four originally over towards A site, but I think Kiyoshima caught a glimpse that as he passed on by the doors and they're immediately gone a fast rotate. Are they gonna try and stack it out? Kiyoshima gets a little peek, gets the information he requires for his team as Happy tries to come around and back him out. But Fnatic, they're very mobile. They're quickly reacting to this and feeling that B site is possibly stacked. Yeah, very good job indeed. MBK up here with a Deagle in hand and looking for a Headshot on someone, gonna try and switch it up just a tiny bit. Gotta be careful here, Fnatic. He's gotta get a chance to get at least a couple of shots off. You can duck down behind, there's the first. Second one! Pronax is down, MB kill. Still gunning for them, can he get the kills? Apex shows up, it's a disaster for Fnatic. They're running into the French wall, and it's gonna be all of Meister gone down. Grenade to the face, Flusher is alone. An absolutely cataclysmic round here. Envy, they might just win the map based on this. And Flusher, he's trying to fight it back and stay alive, gets a headshot, but it's too late. They're coming for him and he's got 20 health. What a round. What an absolute disaster. Envy have recovered all the rifles as well. You can see the Mac-10 for Kenny, the Gilil, the Scout, the AK. That has just gone horribly, horribly wrong for Fnatic. The double deagle from Sean. Look at this. In a grand final, that is absolutely insane. And the way Fnatic approached that, they had nades to play with. They had a Molotov as well. The normal thing to do before going onto the site, especially on an anti-eco. Molotov the site before you execute that. At least that cancels that pressure. But a little bit of nerves from Fnatic being shown there. But they will have to be on a full eco now. Even just one P250, no utility to play with. So. All of a sudden, Envious, again, looking very strong going into the second half. How do they settle their nerves after a play like that? Happy going looking for kills. He's got himself the FAMAS, and JW is going to be the man that will come around the corner. We'll get a good tag down on him, and Olaf Meister also picked off. They're going to keep on challenging him, but Happy's not worried. It's in-game leader versus in-game leader. Pronax will back away. Happy's forced away. He will get taken down, and now we're going to see also Kenny S getting involved. Flush it down low, will get caught out. Apex comes in, and it is 12-6. Envious with a very good lead now. The economy is starting to settle on the CT side already, and that's going to be a big worry. Fnatic coming into this one, buying what they can. Yeah, but I'm still a little, a little flabbergasted by the last round. There was so much time on the board, and they just didn't have to commit to that. A big mistake made with them, but they will force their way into this one. Galil there, AK is not a full bike, and no head armor as well on three of the players. That can be very important going up against CTs, but here we go then. The Terror is making their way along, but they won't have any contention whatsoever. No. Look at Kenny pushing into the middle with the AWP. What is this? Pronax is about to be sandwiched. Are they going to actually check for him? He's still hiding there. Kiyoshima going to find him. And that's a big opening frag. Pronax gone down. They have long control. Yes, they're going to walk back in here. Crims fighting Apex. He's going to miss a big opportunity, but there it comes. And MBK going down to flush us. And now we're back into a 4v3. A very confusing round. This is just a clear indication there's so much going on. No team wants to play predictably, and Kenny goes down. JW with a shot to the face, and it's Olaf Meister to take out Happy Lee and Kiyoshima 1v3. One flash left is all that Flusher has, and Kiyoshima with a full assortment of grenades. He's going to have to make use of them here because Flusher is pushing up behind him. Is he going to get caught out from behind? Yes, he is, and Flusher is there. And as you mentioned, what a confusing round. That was, that was the... T-side defense, the rule effectively. Book of CS has been thrown out the window for this game. No one's really conforming to any sort of meta right now. They're running around, they're trying to surprise the other enemy as much as they can, and they're not even finding each other. It's absolutely pandemonium on the server right now. 12 <laughs> to 7 in favor of Envious, but full buys once again. Have a little bit of a force buy from Kiyoshima as well, and it seems like they've got a deagle on him. So let's see how this one goes down. Maybe a slower pace now from Fnatic.
Well, what will they respond to this one? Fnatic. That's got to be a little confidence boost, especially after that eco that caught them off, caught them napping, caught them completely out and caught them cold. Envious. Going to hold steady here. They have got themselves a bit of a mishmash themselves. Kiyoshima. Just that deagle, but he's all the way over in the back of B site. Fnatic aren't really too worried about him just yet. It's looking like they're going to gain a bit of mid control. As Pronex goes for a little look here, Kenny S is holding the angle. He's got to be careful. Are they going to be expecting the AWP? That's the question. Does manage to land the shot, but doesn't get the kill. As Happy covers his retreat. Very safe setup there, especially with the flashbang. I really do like that. You're already safe just jumping away, but. They're expecting Fnatic to be very aggressive and they don't want to take any risks here. Now there's only about 40 seconds left and are they going to really flash Happy through? Yes, they will and it's going to be a kill on Flush and next in line, Kenny to help out. What a great combination. Defense there up on Catwalk, almost impossible to deal with. And the bomb is trapped up there, 25 seconds. They're going to go for it. It's a 5v3, they pick it up and they run back down middle but Apex sees it right now. Envy, they know everything. This might not have been worth going into the B bomb site. They know they've been spotted 15 seconds on the Board. What's the reaction for Kiyoshima? Peekaboo is all it needs, and Kiyoshima gets himself the initial entry straight away. Olaf Mosa and MBK from behind. Oh. oh my word, Envious. They are cruising at the moment. 13 7, just three rounds remain. That's all they need. And once again, the economy of Fnatic is in tatters. Yeah, that's to us what happens when you win a round and lose the subsequent after that. That was a really nice play from Envious. They, they, this is the moment here. They saw there's about 40 seconds on the clock. They could feel the round building up. Happy flash through, makes two huge frags and spots the bomb as well. They then saw the bomb rotating and they managed to get themselves in a really good position. Fast execute now coming on along. Yeah, almost blocking each other there, but a good grenade takes down Crims there. That was Kenny and MBK teaming up. And with no body armor, those grenades are going to do a lot of damage. MBK landing some good spray. And this is a Clean up round from Envy. They're about to be at 14. The Fnatic, half of that on seven. And MBK finds Flusher. Pronex down in pit. The last man and the nade will come rolling on down to make Fnatic have a serious problem. They've caught for a pause here, but honestly, it feels like it's a little too late. They will have themselves pretty much a rifle round. There's a little, still a little short because there's just a lack of kills coming from Fnatic. There's only 3k for both Olaf and Flosha. They, they have to buy in this situation. They can't allow Envious to get to match point when there's so many rounds left. So they, put, they are going to buy. They just need to work out what they're going to do with it. We've seen so much aggression from Envious and then a lot of passive rounds as well. They've been very hard to predict. There's been so many crazy plays coming in from either side. But now Envious looking strong. They've got full rifles and their AWP as well. But let's see how this one goes down. This is, uh, could potentially put Envious in touching distance of uh, in fact, number two here. So. Interesting round. I really feel like Fnatic are playing more safely than we'd normally see them do, and I think that might be a problem. You can also tell that Envy are constantly expecting more aggression out of Fnatic, and I feel like sometimes the, the Swedish team right now, they slow down just a little bit too much, and Envy are allowed to set up, like we saw the last round, yep. that counter pop flash into Catwalk. They're allowed to have just an extra, we're not talking much, but an extra five seconds to think about what the next play is, and normally Fnatic are the ones controlling the pace of the game, but they're not they're not doing that right now. It'll be interesting to see where Kenny S goes this round. They've been keeping it random and dynamic almost every single time. This is another time to do it. They know the reaction's coming in, the pause is there. What can they do to actually counter this? There's going to be a big play. I, I would imagine a set piece from Fnatic now. They need to try something a little bit different. Get onto the site, get a bomb down, force a post-plant situation. We can see there the Galils are coming in, three AKs as well, but they have got a decent amount of grenades to play with. This is the round that counts for Fnatic. Timeout. Has it done it's all it's required? That's the question. It we did, are about it did to get away. Game, it did last game. It absolutely worked wonders. And Olaf Meister said that just as much in the interview. He's like, I was worried up until the pause. <laughs> and that's perhaps what they need to do. But they are going to have to go on a tear to try and turn this around. Envy just one round away from match point. And they are trying to switch things up themselves there. Kenny. Looking for the peak and going aggressive once again. Flusher and Pronax, though, are quickly taking advantage of this one. They're out and long A. Apex and Kenny, they're all the way up in mid. Great double push here, but Apex will go down. Pronax turning around and picking up that kill. And Kenny's not going to stuck in Where's the he middle. going? Weirdly, I don't know. He's got an AWP, gets a shot on Pronax, and he's trying to fall back. They should be able to punish him, but they're just not feeling it, Fnatic. 
They're not quick enough here. And now Kiyoshima up on the plateau. He will be dropped. NBK, he's now showing up in the doorway. There's going to be a smoke to block him off. It's a 2v3. And they're just now heading into the bomb side. There's only a single flashbang here on Kenny for the retake of Envy. But oh, look at this spray through. Almost dropping JW. The bomb, it's being put down, yes. But how tough is it going to be for Fnatic to actually keep this bomb side? They heard the plant happy. Tried to go aggressive. Tried to rattle the shots through. But as you saw, MBK, he's going full on. He's just ready to pounce on through. And why would they slow down? There's the flash. That's going to catch Crims out. They're going to push on through. MBK gets one. But Crims with a spray down. He gets himself the triple. The Fnatic are not done yet. Can you believe it? What a spray down that was. It looked like he had absolutely no chance of those flashbangs. Comes back and gets a four man just when Fnatic needed it. Look at this. This is absolutely insane. What a play. That is a big stage play. And Crims playing out of his mind there. So the reaction from Envious was to push up middle and cause chaos so once again it worked and they got us to a four on two but what a what a round that was again i mean if this comeback happens and that has to be the catalyst right there you can't see that as a teammate and not be inspired to try and see if you can follow it up a very aggressive push into middle here fanatic there's the change of pace that we were just talking about they're coming in apex now he realizes we're going to the kiyoshima He's looking the other way, he's gonna go down and Apex can he spray down one, he can, it's a two for one trade, but he's so low on health and Flusher will take him out and now 3v3 retake and Envy, they're not that close to the bomb side as it goes down here, this retake's gonna be much tougher than last time. No kits in hand either, they're gonna have to make a decision here whether it's gonna be worth it. MBK coming from tunnels, they're in position to go for this, but the question is have they got the time and MBK gets a little peek, I think he... Maybe just checking for Flusher, that single little tap if it lands, there's the flash, he's going to push on through but I don't think he's going to be expecting Crims around the corner, he finds JW, he finds Flusher but he doesn't manage to land the clean shot now Crims, is he going to come to the rescue once again? It doesn't matter, Flusher's in the corner, Fnatic close out the round, it was so close though, they are just hanging on by a thread. Such a close round here. That, that retake. When they've got the envious have got enough rounds here. I'd have liked them actually to save those guns, take it into the next, and use that economy going into this round. But now it looks like it has to be onto a full eco here. And now uh, Pronax predicting that as well. He can see him getting the, the SL out, and uh, Olaf Meister as well getting the SMGs out. Uh, allows them to kind of uh, scout out the map, see what's going on, and get information as to what the CT setup is presenting to them. If you think you're playing against a round where they where they might be tempted to stack up somewhere, it's great to have that one max ten. What a shot there, Crims getting executed outside of the B bomb site, and there's a good grenade on Apex who will shut him down, and I like the fact that Pronex leading the charge. If he drops the Mac 10, so what? Well, not a big giveaway, but maybe they found out where the stack is in return. They found an MTB bomb site after a couple of kills. MBK's hunted JW down, that's an AWP in the hands now. It could be passed across to Kenny as he's making track, so anything will work out for Envious. They have plenty of rounds to play with still, Fnatic. We'll close this one out, but they need to make sure they don't lose any more rifles. Their economy is not exactly the cleanest right now. But now getting into double digits. This is the danger point where they feel they know who they're up against. The king of comebacks, we saw it before. I've got a feeling they may be able to do this. This is going to be a really exciting finish to this map. And uh, we will save a WWP on Kenny S there, but looking at the economy of the rest of the team, they will have enough to buy next round, but it's very important they do save that orb. They're going to be able to do that as well. Kenny, all the way up in the terror spawn here, and that is a big giveaway. Put a rifle in the hands of Kenny like this, and you really never know what might happen. Well, we've seen some very aggressive rounds. We've seen some very passive ones. I'd like to see Envious just, just play back a little bit. Instead of taking the games of Fnatic and allowing them to get early frags, just hold back and force Fnatic into an execute. You see Kenny has changing his position now. He's going to go towards long and see what he can get there, but he won't have any T towards him. We can see all of them heading towards the B tunnels. This is a speedy little train from Fnatic, and you know what? It's worked the last two rounds. Why not try it again? But Apex and Kiyoshima are yet to go down. They do get themselves one and a second. Kiyoshima going big for his team when it counts. Flusher and JW, they're caught in the corner. Happy gets another. He tries to go through the smoke, and Envy managed to take it to match point without losing a single man. I assume they thought the CT economy wouldn't be fantastic. A B rush, try and get the early frag, but not even making one single kill there. This destroys their economy. You can see we're on the match point now for Envious. And have a look over there. Just going to be pistols and one AK in the hands. We can see Flusher maybe able to buy one as well. But what a fantastic round from Envious. They really are in a strong position now. And it looks like another fast play coming in Fnatic. Yeah, they're coming out long here. MBK, Kenny are both there. 
And a bit of a smoke going up already back in the bomb side. They don't feel any temptation to try and find it. They just want to play this one safely and not give anything easily to Fnatic. We're still being very fast and MBK going down. This might be on Kenny. He's got the AWP. He's in a good position, oh. but already very low on health. Molotov to block out the bomb side and Apex with a shot on Pronex. A follow-up headshot before he drops. And Kenny trying to keep himself alive, but they're coming up long. It's all of Meister. Crims gets the shot and it's a 2v2. And definitely, Fnatic, they can extend this series a little bit longer here. All of Meister gets a shot on Happy, and now it's Kiyoshima in a 1v2. He's running up Catwalk. He's got a lot of time here with the kit, with the flashbang, and with Olaf very low on health. He's looking for the shot. He's jumping, and he gets it. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. And now it's all on Crims in a 1v2 here. He's got a massive health advantage. But Kiyos Kiyoshima, can he do it? He's down in the pit. He's jumping again and shooting at Crims. Just one bullet is going to be enough. Can he get it? He should get it. Just nine left in the magazine here for Kiyoshima. That bomb taking away and this might not be enough. Crims, I think he's stalled for enough time. Kiyo gonna go down. A triple kill here for the Swedish player. And a little bit more for Fnatic. Can you believe it? The Hail Mary play running out long with the pistols and a couple of rifles actually works out for them. And of course it does. It's Fnatic. They're never going to give up in this situation. And they buy themselves another life here and get a step closer. Four rounds required to tie this one up. But you can see the money's still bad and they can the scout coming off a flush out. But it's going to be a scout and MBK too. But Kenny Ness does retain the AWP and he will be facing as well. Narrowly misses out on his job there. So, so close. Now we're going to see aggression once again. Apex is just pushing straight through tunnels. He's going to check out. He's going to get around the backside of Crims if he looks across the side. But Crims spins around and gets himself the kill. A site wide open. JW making his way across there. And that smoke will keep Envious out of play. And remember, their economy is also in a poor shape. And this is suddenly turning very much in Fnatic's favor, despite the fact it's Envy on match point. Flusher, he missed that uh, peak with just a pixel. He doesn't realize that Kiyoshima's right in front of him. And Kiyoshima, I think you heard that grenade. He's going to go with the Famas and take him out. Happy with the kill as well. Oh, no. They're very far away from the side. And that's the one thing that's keeping Fnatic safe here. If those two kills had happened uh, close to the side, that could have been very scary. Yeah, once they got the bomb down, it seemed like they were in a safe position. And Kenny S, once again, trying to save his AWP. He's going to be towards C spawn though, just hoping he can be gifted this one. But taking a look at their money as well, they may be in a very difficult situation. They have about $1,900 each going into the next round, so he wants to make sure he can keep this just to have a chance to give us some frags, but he's not done yet. He takes down JW, and will he be able to find another frag or will he get taken down? Time will tell. <laughs> oh no! Kenny's orb goes down. Thought he'd managed to linger in that smoke long enough, but Pronax hunts him down, and that is absolutely massive as well because Envy now on a save and Fnatic he could be dragging this to overtime I think I think Envy are going to get one rifle round left yeah just got to take this round by round Fnatic doing so much to get back into this series I can't believe it but it looks like they'll be oh this stack from the CT zone this could be it if, if they really push long into this stack that will be God, a little happening? bit interesting. They were all around the corner. They've got no flashbangs. There's the one actually. Kenny, he goes down. Olaf with the follow up kill. They should be falling back. They must realize they're all here now. And Fnatic are still fighting, even though they don't need to. They are coming out on top, but this is a big risk to take right here. JW gonna go down as well. What is going on here, Lee? You can't ask aggressive players to not be aggressive when they have rifles versus pistols. They just don't want any of it. But it is. Common sense has finally run true for Fnatic and Crimson Flusher do make their way to B-Site. They will get the plant down and Envy. Well, they've managed to rescue two AKs. I was talking about how their economy is in trouble. Keeping hold of these two AKs will be pretty big for them going into the next round. Absolutely. It's now looking at the 15-13, it's going to be very difficult now. This is when the pressure comes in. Can they handle it? Can they hold on? Fnatic, two more required here, but this is the grand final we wanted. It's going right down to the wire. I mean, it had a terrific start, and it, I think it hasn't really let off since. We started at a very, very high level, and it's kept going on. <laughs> it's only the first map here. If Fnatic make this into overtime, I don't know what will happen. We'll end up in a situation where fatigue is also going to be a factor. How long can you keep performing at such a high level? That is the question. Here we go. Envious. It's now or never. They could be staring at a potential overtime. Fnatic from 15-9. I believe they've managed to claw this back. Incredible stuff.
JW has got that long spawn again. I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for a double all for them as well. It's going to be, he's going to have contention. This frag could be massive. Just managed to land it, gets flashed out, tries to go for the chance, but Happy's going to get the spray down in the end, and JW getting a second peek. Maybe a little greedy, trying to get something through the smoke, but it doesn't work out, and Happy will rotate back. Bomb all the way in top middle, so a very clear indication here for Fnatic that they want to wait and see. This is the default spread on Dust2. They don't want to lose the 29th round on the first map here to someone sneaking up behind them. That would be the worst feeling. They want to make sure that Envy are far back and defensive, and then they'll go for a play. They've got two smokes, three smokes in fact, and two Molotovs. Very important with these Molotovs if you're going to execute on the A-bomb side to so flush out anyone who's there. But look at Kenny pushing through. He goes down oh. to all of How does that work? He gets that shot. And this might happen for Fnatic. That's a good molly. That's going to slow them down. But Olaf's going to push on through. And then that's going to catch MBK out. He's the man in the cross, but he's been flashed out. Apex is going to join them. But Olaf's already in position. Now the rest of the Fnatic, they're starting to push on. But the rotate, the counter, the fake, it's all working out. And it's Olaf absolutely pulling the strings around the back. JW's going to head back towards a site and completely keep Envious away from this one. 15 14 looks almost guaranteed here, ladies and gentlemen. Apex and Keo, they can't go for it. So we saw Olaf Meiser again. The, the Envious went for the push on shore with the flashbang. He took down a no scope and then just opened up the bomb site completely. Fantastic stuff for him. Three frags and what a performance. We know he is one of the best players in the world, but Kiyoshima desperately trying to stay alive now. He knows how important it is to save this rifle. They've got nothing if this goes down and it will go down. It's Onyx to pick up the kill. We're gonna go to the 30th round here, 14-15, and the economy on Envy, well, they've got two people who can buy reasonably, and the West, they're gonna have to try and see if they can keep up here. What a match. We have to think back to that round of crims on the B-bomb side, the 4-on-1 situation, where maybe they were being a little bit too cavalier with their retake onto the B site. Maybe this has come back to haunt them now as we go into the 30th round. You've got to think back, seven rounds in, Olaf Meister, not a single kill on the board, and here he's standing at about to hit 20. It's an incredible turnaround, and one players like that do step up. Fnatic absolutely respond. Now, final round of regular time. Will Fnatic do it? Will they take it to overtime in what looked like an unwinnable situation, or will Envious finally close out this match? They are understandably playing it very cautiously. Nothing being shown right now for Envy. They're not giving up any easy kills. At the same time, they're also allow, allowing Fnatic to control the pace of the game, which is what they weren't doing earlier than they did them so many rounds. A good little trick smoke here for all of Meister to try and peek through and happy. He's feeling very tempted, but he's gonna be a little bit patient and ends up falling back at now 45 seconds here. And the bomb is still in T spawn with Flusher. This is very clever, actually, from Envious. They're not giving any information away whatsoever. You can see the terrorist desperately just trying to find a kill here just to open it up and work out what's going on. But it's not going to happen for them. The CTs are playing so passively. Flush is making his way with the bomb over to B site. I think Olaf's going to be the man that sells a gigantic fake here. Keo's going to try and rotate, but he's going to run in headlong. He's straight to Crims. Crims will cut him out. Pronax and Flusher. Apex is left alone over on B site now, but they're not smoking because Flusher doesn't want to choose to throw it down. He's all the way over in tunnels, but it doesn't matter when they're landing shots like this. Apex is trying to stop them, but it's not going to happen. It will be overtime in the first map of the Grand Finals. I can't believe it. How has this happened? They were so far away from this and the euphoria they must be feeling right now after getting back into this. And it came down to some amazing situations. Like I said, the rule book of CS is being thrown out the window here. So many unexplainable rounds going on. It was been an absolutely fantastic opening to this grand final. I feel like for anyone who's also a veteran of watching Global Offensive, maybe especially, there's so many tiny signs and signals that they're playing at a completely different level right now. You saw GW, JW in the middle actually going for the pre-fire orb shot on the right-hand side of the door. He didn't even wait for them to cross. He wanted for them to try and set up and just shoot them as they were crossing. There's so many little things that you almost never see in regular play or in normal uh, situations. Yeah. What a game this is. Now, Henry, I've got to ask you, how does overtime differ from uh, regulation? How, do, how, how is this going to affect the players? Well, this is going to put Fnatic in a fantastic situation. Envious is going to be so frustrated with that after having such a huge lead there and throwing it away towards the end, especially with some really questionable rounds. We mentioned that four-on-one situation with Crims as well. We didn't ever see it coming this far, but 
it, everything's reset now, and Fnatic know they're in the driving seat. The momentum shifted in their favor, and Envious need to work out what went wrong for them there and why they got shut out. Towards the end, it was absolutely crazy. So many force buys going in favor of Fnatic. We kind of just thought, okay, they've got one more round on the board. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be ended the next one, but it never happened. Fnatic just kept the pressure on, and amazing scenes here. And this is exactly what we wanted. This is indeed what we wanted, and for a moment we thought it was going to be a quick done deal on the first map, but how wrong were we at the 10-5 first half? Fnatic, again, the pause, it rings true. Whatever Pronat so comes true. up with in that <laughs> pause time must be absolute magical words. That guy needs to run on and start managing Real Madrid. I mean, it's a great synergy between the players. Vugo in the background there talking to Pronax. They really come up with some good stuff and they have a, a lot of resources in play on the Fnatic team to try and figure out exactly what's happening. We've got the overtime. They start with $10,000 now. They need to get four rounds in total here to win. We're looking for the first team to 19 rounds and they'll be taking dust too. Interesting that neither have gone for the double orb setter, which most of them were running throughout, so clearly worried about that economical problem if they lose that round. Both players getting tagged there. You can see JW and MBK taking damage here. Big aggression at the start of this round, and here we go then. And Kenny S actually getting tagged as well. This is an interesting start of the round. Well, if Meister getting the grenade thrown straight on towards Kiyoshima as well, so a lot of damage being dished out by Fnatic, but as of yet, no opener going in their favour. It's looking like it may well be an A hit. Olaf Meister trying to sell the flake. It's something he does quite regularly and it's going to be all on MBK here. This is not a comfortable position to be in. When they all come around this corner, MBK on 16 health. When he goes down, Kenny's going to get smoked off and Happy will be very much alone in that bomb site. This could all rest on one person. He makes the jump. He's going to try and buy time with his flashbang. It's up once, but they're all coming. Mid-air shot, and MBK is down. And there's 40 seconds left. Fnatic, they actually do slow it down. They want to see if Envy are going to make any kind of mistake. And it could be Kenny pushing out on long here. They switch positions quickly. They're happy. Run straight over to short. Kenny is hopping himself up on top of the boxes to get himself a look down long. They knew they really wanted to get an early frag before they managed to get in position, but they're going to be piling around the corner. Happy's going to have to get in position. Kenny manages to find one. Apex is just below, but Olaf Meister and Flusher will manage to cut them down, and Apex has to wait in the smoke. It looks like they're going to backtrack away. Envy goes to the save. It's Fnatic that take the first round in overtime. Interesting decision, like you said, Anders, but for MBK to even stay in that position. Once he lost the long control there, that's where the round fell apart with the CTs. It enables him to pick into the bomb side, like you saw there, and they're so isolated on the bomb side as well. It's it's very difficult to hold that. Kenny is doing everything he could on the side, but he only got one frag before he got taken down. I've got a lot of admiration for the way that Fnatic are playing right now as well. The patience and the overall team control to get the frag that quickly and then not just try and speed up behind it. With only 40 seconds left, that's a huge temptation. A good kill from Kiyoshima there. And again, because Envy are playing the CT side, their rifles are more expensive. They only have 10,000 starting money in three rounds. You can use all that money. So they've got to save some rifles here. It's really key that they do it. Yeah, especially, like, you may think 10k is enough, but going to that third round, if you lose two rounds, you're going to be on an eco. So it is very, it is a good idea to save rifles. We see Kenny answering back to the AWP again, but we have got that long spawn and will they be taking it? It's going to be Flusher leading the charge now to the long area. It's Kenny S that's going to be lining up the shot, quickly flashed out, Flusher already through, and that nade coming straight on towards Olaf Meister, but Flusher already through, Kenny and MBK holding the angle around the smoke, MBK checks, but Flusher gets the spray down, and that starts things off well, and now Kenny is in a really tricky situation, he's got three members pushing him in pit. Yeah, but coming up from Catwalk, it's JW, and as Kenny goes down, they already have the A bomb site. Apex is running up, but he has no idea. He's going to get sprayed down. JW, a moment of hesitation there, but it comes through. And once again, Envy, they can't even dream of retaking here. That's twice now that they have to give it up before it even really unfolds. Fnatic, they're playing godlike CS3 here at the moment. Krim's going to walk right in there, and Happy actually finds that kill in spite of the odds. We need to remember that both these teams in regular time did have a higher T-side ratio. 10-5, both the scores, so... Envy's still going to be in a little bit of trouble coming into this third and final round of their extra time half. 
So a, a very big spawn-based game being played here. We saw Flusher getting that nice spawn there, taking it into long. They got the first two frags again, and that enabled JW just to run onto the side. That pincer action again. The CT's desperately trying to retake from CT spawn, but wasn't meant to be, and they actually will lose the kill there on Kiyoshima. Happy, the last man remaining will save a gun. And this is the situation we're talking about. Going into that third round, it's very difficult when you're buying AWPs and rifles every single time to actually have a full buy going into this final round. Was that, was that D-Man, a, a, a last nanosecond kill? And look at the guns oh for AWPs. Fnatic, they're ready to shoot some <laughs> ducks as they cross the middle. It's going to be a challenge, and Apex not in this lifetime. He is destroyed. Well, when they're lining up like that, you know you're in trouble. JW already in sight, spray down through the door, catches Kyo. That grenade's going to rattle through, and this is sheer confidence from Fnatic, sheer aggression being unanswered by Envious. Kiyoshima gets himself in the, gets himself the orb. Can he make some work from this one? Pronex around the side will manage to catch him with the AK. And Kenny S and MBK is all that stands, but Fnatic will be closing out the half. Oh, hello, NBK is not done yet. What is this madness? How is this <laughs> round not done for NB? I don't understand. NBK, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here. He's going to run through with the Deke looking for the shot, but he can't make it. He's going to get shot down by Flusher. 18 to 15, a single round for Fnatic, and we'll have seen one of the most ridiculous comebacks ever in a major tournament here into overtime and potentially into a victory. And look at what Apex sees here. Hello. In <laughs> <laughs> That's the, it's, a, it's a viable thing to do on the overtime rides. They've obviously got excess cash, so just going for that initial kill through the doors there allows them to drop the AWPs and go into something very fast from there. So they did that, got the initial frag, and then they pushed into B straight after. Well, what a first half of overtime. What Fnatic. a game it's been overall. Envy need to just reset, get themselves back together because they need to remember the fantastic T side they had. But that was 18 rounds ago and things have gone a little awry since then. Fnatic have found their form, they're hitting their strides and just about everybody's starting to perform. Pronax up to almost 20 kills now and Olaf Meister alongside him. Both these guys were on zero, eight rounds in. D-Man and Henry, when you woke up this morning, you know, you're, that's a tiny hope for this kind of game. You <laughs> hope for it, but when it comes... You it's hope still, a dream for this. Yeah, it's still surprising, isn't it? I can't believe that we're in this situation right here. Another 35 seconds here, Henry, and we'll get a chance to see if Envy can force it into double overtime. You, you did point out, D-Man, they got most of the rounds on the T-Sign. It's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. I think the impossible has been shown on this map more than once. We've seen some absolutely insane rounds coming to it. And Fnatic just playing at champion status and showing why they are the world's number one team. You can never count them out of any situation. And they go 3-0 up in the first half of overtime now. Obviously, Envy has got a huge amount of time going onto the T side now. We saw them doing a very fast-paced game themselves, going into almost every round, taking spawn base as well. The first gun round they actually took was just rushing up short with five players. That's not very traditional, really, in, in terms of CS. You don't normally want to choose that area to rush up, but this game has proven to be anything but traditional. Well, Fnatic and Envy both going to be starting off the round with double orbs. This is a sign of intent from both teams. Fnatic just need the one. Envy, they are done and dusted without, so why not go for it? Roll of the dice time. Yeah, a bit of a fast move here towards B, but they run into a Molotov and that might have uh, persuaded them to change their mind. JW up on Catwalk to take down Apex. A very strong opening frag that's going to get Fnatic one step closer to winning the first map here. They need another four kills and they will have done it. NBK also tagged up a bit, but Kenny with the reply is ridiculous. He hits the headshot on JW and now we're going to be in a 4v4. Kenny is still holding this angle. Olaf Meister, do you see over him? B. It looks like Happy might actually think about going for the challenge here and Olaf not in his lifetime will he allow that shot to push on through. Flusher will be so vital. Crims is in a perfect position as well. They have a great little crossfire. MBK gets one but they don't count for Flusher to still be there. Kenny S just smokes him off but Flusher's not having any of it. He's going to push on through. He's going to gun down Kenny and Kiyoshima now all alive into the crosshairs of Olaf Meister. Just lines up the shot, gets the support of Flusher and this will be Fnatic taking map one on Dust 2, 1915.
We saw JW there pushing on the shore the last round. He knew he needed to make something happen. Finds that for the lower beat. But this just shows you how equally skilled these teams are. Kenny Esch replying straight back in there. So, such a back and forth round. But Fnatic take map number one. And what a story it's been. Wow, that might have been the first time I've seen a really emotional reaction from Fnatic like that. They definitely felt the pressure of playing on this stage in a game where they were so far behind. An absolutely epic comeback here from Fnatic. Absolutely. They, what was it, 15 8 to 1 stage? And they were got back into it. We saw some ridiculous 4 on 1 situations. We saw rushes almost every single round. They're trying to adapt to each other by pushing up the CT middle and actually not finding anyone because the, the rush has gone on the other side of the map. It was crazy rounds. And things like that happen to champions. And Fnatic, if anything, have proven they are champions. They are chasing their third major title here. And they are now one map away from collecting victory here. It's the ESL1 in Cologne. They are looking to etch their name on that trophy. And honestly, it's very hard to bet against them right now. I don't know what to say. It's it, all tournament long. We've seen the envy of people almost impossible to break, but it feels like Fnatic may have done it. I'm really curious about how the Frenchmen are going to come back, if they can mentally reset themselves in the time we have between the first and the second map here. Yeah, so going into that overtime, we saw them. We thought, I said Fnatic would have the advantage going into that, but they'd make it a clean sweep, 4-0, and that's going to be that's going to carry on to the second map as well. Envy is going to be having a, a massive moral low right now. Well, it's a fantastic start here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how it will follow on, because we are going to a break. But when we come back, it's cobblestone. <laughs>